All right, uh, work on the motorhome commences. And you can see, because that's my garage, I've got the motorhome turned around and leveled. So we'll cover how I did that here in a few minutes. But um, the interesting thing that was revealed leveling off a motorhome is these leaks everywhere. I poured rain last night. It's been, um, it's been raining quite a bit lately here in the Pacific Northwest. And because the motorhome was sort of leaned downhill, uh, I wasn't getting this leak in particular, which is leaving a nice puddle on the floor up here, but there's also leaks up and down the sides that, uh, that are happening. And it's, it's just a big problem. Um, I've come to the conclusion that every single inch of the factory seams needs to be uh, resealed. So I need to unstitch it, drill out the rivets, unscrew the screws, peel it off, carve out the original uh, factory, uh, you know, pookie, the, 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 the caulking, the sealant, and put new stuff in there and then re-rivet it and re-screw it. Um, and I have to do that before I can get to the real meat of this uh, rebuild, which is the remodeling of the cab here, the living space. Um, so yeah, that's kind of a bummer. We got to wait for the weather to be cooperative. I need two days of like 40 degree weather with no rain. Uh, so keep your fingers crossed that we get a couple of those. Um, so hopefully that doesn't, you know, bring progress to a halt. There's a lot of little jobs that I can do um, in the meantime. So I'm gonna keep sort of banging off these little jobs until I can do that. Um, but it, it casts an interesting light on the question that a couple of you asked uh, in comments. And that is, should you buy one of these motorhomes? Uh, at the latter half of this video, I'll do a little bit of a GMC uh, motorhome buyer's guide uh, on the computer. But for now, let's jump into building those ramps so that I can you know, flip it around and level it. And I think I'm gonna install that step there now that now that it's lifted and I have the room to get the drill under there and yeah maybe a couple of other, other uh, little odds and ends that we'll that we'll cover in this video so stay tuned it'll be a good one hi buddy <laughs> okay so here's the setup we have four eight foot uh, two by fours one ten foot two by four and two twelve foot two by fours one ten foot two by six and two twelve foot two by sixes so basically everything in this and these two piles is gonna get cut in half, and these are gonna be the, the, the boards that run lengthwise. These uh, eight footers are gonna get cut into 10 inch lengths, uh, and these are the cross members of the, uh, of the deal. So um, it's a pretty straightforward uh, thing. I just tried to do it as inexpensively as possible, modifying the design that I found there on the forum, the GMC Motorhome Forum. Hey buddy, are you ready to cut, are you ready to cut wood? Okay, let's cut. It's loud, huh? It might hurt your ears. That's why you're wearing ear protection. I Yeah, okay. Here we are. I've got my stop block set up. So that is a 10 inch uh, cut that we're going to make, just a repeated cut. And we're going to do four of these eight foot two by fours all the way down, just 10 inches of chop. Here we go. Uh, so here's a two by four off cut. And what I need to do is cut a 45 degree angle on all of these so that the tires on the motorhome can roll up. So it's not trying to roll up uh, a sharp point. So we have a nice sort of a ramp to roll up. And that means that I need to cut these like that. This is uh, just a janky old uh, miter saw. It's not a compound miter saw. So I only have the ability to sort of rotate the blade like you see, which will work just fine for the two by fours. I can get them under there and that'll be fine. But uh, for the two by sixes, I can only cut them uh, on the flat. I cannot get a two by six in there uh, height wise. You can just see it's, it's banging it's colliding with the blade. So I'm gonna have to do that angle cut uh, on the two by sixes. So there's three cuts to make and I'll have to do those by hand with a handsaw. Did we cut the wood there? Oh yeah, so look, we got all those 45 degree cuts done by hand. This is the best looking one. 
Some of these are pretty ugly. I did a pretty bad job, but it doesn't matter because the, the wheels on the motorhome will roll up them just fine. Okay, and now starting at the long point here, I need to cut three lengths. These are the lengths, so let's get that done. Well, uh, that's all staged, kind of just set up the way that it's gonna go together. You can see this pile of blocks right here. That's all the waste that I have uh, in my design. And um, yeah, I will include a PDF um, in the description down below, because I, I slightly changed the design from the one that floats out there on the, uh, on the GMC forums. I think this is a little bit more economical because uh, that's all the waste that you have, and you're using those uh, 12 foot long boards um, which are going to be less expensive than buying two of the 10 footers. So you can save a little money there. Anyway, I'm going to now have to go through almost that entire uh, stack of screws there. 86. So yeah, uh, you definitely need more than more than one box of screws. Okay, buddy, let's measure these wheels. So we'll go from this lug nut to that lug nut. Looks like just about 40 inches, almost exactly. Okay, you're up on there. Okay, let's check this distance now. We can see from that 2x4 to that 2x4, 40 inches. So the wheels can sit directly on a load-bearing 2x4 column. Now the spacing isn't perfectly regular. You're going to want to check the, uh, the PDF if you plan on doing uh, this project yourself. Anyway, uh, let's get to screwing. Buddy? Show me the blocks. Did you stack those? Go show me. Go stand next to them. Wow. Did you stack those blocks as tall as you are? Oh, wow. That's really neat. Whoa. <laughs>
All right, so it's the next day and you can see it poured rain last night and we've got lots of water and you know dirt splatter up on the uh, the bottom two layers of um, of wood. So that's gonna rot, there's no doubt. Um, probably should have built that bottom two layers out of pressure treated. So I might have to redo this project here next year after those have rotted out quite a bit. Um, if I'm gonna leave this sitting on the ramps for a year, that is. Now, it's nice and level in the driveway with the ramps here, so <laughs> it's more livable. Like if I have guests that come over and wanna stay in my motorhome or something like that. So I think the ramps are gonna be more permanent and I'm probably gonna need to replace those bottom two layers. So mistakes were made, but that's okay. They'll be okay for a year or so. You can see the, um, the Harbor Freight hard rubber uh, wheel chalk. And then up here, I forgot to tell you guys, but basically I was cutting those 45 degree uh, cuts on the table saw on these uh, four, because there's two here and two on the other side, on these four um, two by fours, just to help, you know, get it up the ramp. All right, well now that the motorhome is lifted and I can get the drill under there with uh, room to spare, let's get this step installed right here, shall we? Now I found this PDF online, which seems to be the official installation instructions from Ragusa USA for every single version of this step that they have ever made. And the instructions say two things. First of all, I need to drill quarter inch holes and use grade eight bolts. So uh, yeah, that's okay, good to know. But this one bothers me. Just be sure to uh, slide the step rearwards or aft uh, two inches. Um, in order to compensate for the door hinges. And this just, I mean, I cannot understand how the step bolted to the frame underneath the, the coach would interfere with the door hinges. So I did a little bit more searching on the internet and I found this guy's rig here uh, who claims that basically mounting this Ragusa step, um, you know, caused this problem with his door. Now you can see the gap at the bottom is like, oh, I don't know, an inch. And the gap up here at the top is like, you know, three eighths of an inch maybe. So uh, somehow mounting his step has tweaked his door so his door no longer seals. And uh, I put two and two together because I had seen this video by Jim Bounds. By the way, this guy is the guru for these GMC coaches. Anyway, he released this video uh, a while back talking about the, the frame sag on basically every single one of the coaches that he's ever seen. So if you can see, it's not an artifact of the camera. Those front cross members in this video are warped, which means that basically the whole coach, the whole the fuselage basically is um, sort of bending these, these cross members, these cross supports and dropping the coach, uh, which is a problem. And I think that, that the coach sag, the frame sag, um, is the reason that the door does this. When you bolt the, uh, the step, the step is so rigid and when you bolt it onto the, um, onto the frame, basically it, it, it sags the door. This happens to the door. So um, I don't like the idea of mounting my step two inches off of the center line. I want it to be centered on my doorway. So I think I'm gonna have to follow Jim's advice here, uh, maybe get the, uh, the whatever product he sells to uh, fix this frame sag so that I can mount my uh, step in the doorway, centered in the doorway. I know it's kind of extreme measures, but um, I'm gonna risk it. I'm gonna mount the step centered and uh, see if I you know, have problems with my door ceiling. Okay, so this bowing of the floor, which is demonstrated by this six foot level being able to rock back and forth here, uh, this mostly happens here at the front of the coach. And, um, you know, if you look at the structure of the thing, it makes a lot of sense why that's the case. And my motorhome is definitely no exception. Uh, I've got this problem for sure. So now that we know that, if we think about uh, the step here, uh, this broken corner makes a lot more sense. Basically, this um, this screw here mounts to the the coach to the body to the body, and then this screw hole here mounts to the frame. But the body here and this screw hole there uh, are both kind of pretty close to the rear axle, so there's not going to be a lot of sagging that happens there. The structure is really beefy. But up here, uh, this is closer to the front of the coach, which means that um, this part touching a frame member not going to sag. But this portion here gonna have a whole lot of forces going downwards because the whole coach is trying to sag onto this moment here. So that means that you basically have a strong connection between here and there, and then this corner is being pushed down, which is teeter tottering that corner up. And that's why this broke right across the weakest point 
um, through the hole right there, snap that off. So it wasn't me being uh, ungentle when I removed it. It was actually uh, the sagging problem that broke my step here. So underneath the door right here under the motorhome, and we can see this is uh, fiberglass and that's metal. So I might be able to drill through uh, that flange. Uh, we're gonna have to see where that bolt hole ends up. Yeah, you see, that's what I'm worried about. You see that hole? It's, uh, it's not falling back far enough. We've got that little flange there that if I slide it back, the flange doesn't sit right. So that's clearly where it's supposed to sit. So here at another place on the motorhome, we can see an exposed portion of that extrusion. And we wanna get the bolt uh, to go right through this sort of flange that sticks off like that, right through there. So holding the step here in place, we can see uh, where the hole sits relative to the extrusion. And it's gonna be t a tight fit, but I think it'll work perfectly. So there's one more piece to this puzzle, uh, and that is the fact that I was already planning on removing the two plywood subfloor uh, pieces here at the front of the coach. And I'm removing those in order to, uh, you know, install the brackets that will mount the, uh, the shoulder harness, you know, reclining seats to the frame right here. So um, while I'm in there doing that job, I can put some other bracketry in there to level the sag on the coach. And once the sag problem is addressed, I can then install the step without having any problems. Now, if I installed the step now, uh, I could potentially get away with it. Um, I could use some spacers or something like that to, to correct for the sag, but um, there's a risk that my holes might be misaligned once I straighten the coach out, the, you know, solve the sag problem. So it's prudent to wait uh, until I've you know, addressed the major issue before uh, installing the step. But now that the motorhome is lifted up off the ground with the, uh, with the, you know, the wooden lifts, the wooden ramps, um, I can get back to the, uh, the generator and finally install that muffler that I picked up uh, way back in episode two. All right, so the generator is slid out of its cubby and we can see the, uh, the old damaged muffler. So let's put this, uh, this quote unquote new muffler, at least undamaged Onan muffler uh, back on here. Well, that was relatively painless, which is awesome. Got a bunch of schmoo to clean off from under there. When I actually try to start the thing, which uh, I will do at some later date, but apparently, you know, according to Dan and the previous owners, that will, uh, that will start right up. And that's what it looks like when it's all tucked away into its cubby hole. But uh, anyway, let's talk about uh, removing this vinyl striping one more time. You can see that I removed a fair portion of it from up here in the front. But uh, the problem is I burned through my, uh, my last one of these that works. I have this bag uh, full of new ones and I've tried every single one of them. And let me show you what happens. So yeah, here in the rain, uh, this, uh, this, you know, the surface stays cool enough with the water for a minute, but eventually uh, the wheel just starts melting and instead of removing vinyl, it just leaves, you know, a thick gummy residue of melted wheel stuck to the motorhome. So uh, buyer beware uh, on eBay buying these eraser wheels. Uh, you better give them a try uh, as soon as you get them. Uh, in the mail and make sure you contact those sellers if you get the faulty wheels like I've gotten. Anyway, let's uh, let's jump onto the computer and uh, talk about how to get the best deal on one of these GMC motorhomes. So hypothetical situation, you've found my playlist about restoring my motorhome and it's inspired you and you wanna buy your own uh, GMC motorhome. Now, uh, let me tell you what I've learned uh, and you know, give you a little advice uh, on that front. So this here is Jim Bounds' uh, YouTube channel. Jim is one of the most important people in the, the world or the hobby of these old uh, coaches because he runs the GMC co-op down there in Florida somewhere. But if you click at this on this link at the top of his website here, Coaches for Sale, these are not for sale by him. These are actually uh, uh, private parties, other people uh, listing these for sale that he just puts them, throws them up on his website. So we have, you know, fully restored, perfect coaches. Like everything's going to be perfect about these. Might as well be, be brand new because they're completely rebuilt. $95,000 for this one. What's this one? $85,000 for the next one. Uh, $95,000 for the Coca-Cola one. Uh, but you can scroll down a ways and get into what, what's this one? Like 7,500 bucks, I think. From expensive to cheap, all, all there on Jim Bounds' website. Now, back to his YouTube uh, channel here. I was watching one of these videos and he basically said that um, 
you have to figure on getting a, a workable coach is going to cost you $30,000 no matter what you do. So even if you buy a $7,500 coach, it's going to cost you, uh, what, $23,000 more to, uh, to get it to where it's reliable and you can actually travel in it. Um, <clears throat> that, that's, uh, that seems like it might be accurate. Um, if you are incredibly handy, you might be able to get it done for $20,000, but you're going to have to buy a lot of parts no matter what you do. If you do want to purchase one, the GMC co-op is not your only option for finding them. There's also this uh, Facebook group, which is GMC Motorhome Marketplace. So if you scroll through here, you can just find lots of parts and uh, other people are showing you the Craigslisting, uh, you know, in their, in their local area, the Craigslistings for GMC coaches. Let's click on this one. Look, $35,000. Uh, that yeah, looks okay. It looks decent. I don't really like the color scheme, but if they did the roof ceiling so it doesn't smell like mold because uh, there's no leaky roof, then that's a pretty nice coach. Um, all right, so that's one way to do it. But the best way I've found for keeping an eye uh, on one of these coaches and waiting for a good one to come up is by using Facebook in a very specific way. You sign into Facebook and here on your main page on the, on the left, you click on Marketplace. Once Marketplace pops up, you click on the Groups tab, which is the top left. Now you have to be a member of the GMC Motorhome Marketplace to get this to work, but it's pretty obvious this is the best way uh, to visualize and see all of the deals that are available on these motorhomes across the country. And this right now is the off season here in winter. So this is the time to really get a great deal on one of these. Look at this, $6,500, $6,200, $12,000, $10,000, $9,000, $13,000. Um, so yeah, you're seeing there's quite a few coaches in the $10,000 range, um, as low as 6,500 currently for sale. You can, I think there's one way down here. Maybe if I scroll down a little ways. There was like a $600 one. Uh, obviously it's been gutted and it's just gonna take so much work. It's just a husk, just a shell for you to start your project with. Which uh, brings us to the, uh, to the, the discussion here. Do you want to build your own or do you want to get one that just works? So obviously, uh, if you have the money and you want a top of the line version, uh, you'll get one of these restored coaches from Jim Bounds' website. Um, and if you have the time and the know-how, like yours truly, then you're gonna buy one of these uh, $6,500 coaches and um, you know start restoring it and probably end up spending $25,000 on it, which is, I think, what I'm gonna, you know, that's, my, that's my budget, so we'll see if I get there. But before we, uh, before we go, I wanna show you guys this one right here. This is a Craigslisting. Look at this gorgeous woodwork. Look, it's been covered with a, with a motorhome cover for years and it's just, you know, it's gorgeous. Made by a, by a woodworking, like a boat builder. And, you know, he clearly loved it. And what I think is going on is he's just too old to travel. And you're going to find these if you go looking. You're going to find um, coaches which were just super duper loved by the owners who kept really good care of them, but they're just too old. They're like 80 years old. And most, I think most of the people uh, who are, you know, in these, in these GMC clubs are getting to be you know, in their twilight years. Um, so young whippersnappers like myself at only 40 years old, we're a rarer breed. And so I think, uh, I think the world is our oyster because we can get one that somebody else clearly spent hundreds of thousands of dollars to restore for like $50,000. And this is my current favorite located here in the Bay Area. And if you're out there and you want to get one and you've got the money, I think this one's the one to get. Uh, look at that. Look at that gorgeously clean engine bay. Yeah, I think that these motorhomes are the bee's knees. And even though I'm facing this monumental project, uh, you'd think I'd be a little less bullish on these things, but nope, I still love them. Look, here's one for sale in Florida for 25,000. That's actually a pretty decent price. This looks like a good motorhome. Uh, so yeah, they're out there. They are out there for sale. And you know, Hollywood loves these motorhomes. I'm not the only person who thinks they're they're gorgeous. There's a cult, there's a cult following. And you know, the Facebook groups have uh, quite a large membership as well. So uh, you'll be in good company if you decide to buy one of these. And uh, just know that if you're gonna spend you know, $6,000, it's gonna be a lot of work. All right, well, that'll do it for this video. In the next one, I think I'm gonna get to a couple of mechanical issues. Uh, hopefully I can make some interesting uh, you know, content out of that for all of you guys. Um, but yeah, there's just there's, you know, so many little odds and ends, little odd jobs here and there to get to. So uh, stay tuned and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.